Okay, I want to show you a couple examples of how I use my jeweler square. Uh, first in metal, say I want to take this piece of, of scrap that I want um, to either make a rectangle or a square out of. Uh, first I want to make sure that I've got a flat edge, which on this one is already flat. And then I'll take my square and, and a scribe, which is just a, a probe that's sharpened. And I'll lay my square out so that one edge is on the flat. And then I'll scribe a line so that now I know that that line is exactly 90 degrees from this edge. Then I'll just take and file or cut up to that line. So now I know now that I've got two square edges. So now this edge and this edge are exactly 90 degrees. Now if I want, say I want to make a, a, a seven millimeter square, I could go in, just make a little mark at 90 degrees, or at uh, seven millimeters, sorry, and the same thing on the other. Now what I can do is go in with my square and line it up so that this edge is flat against this edge and mark my line. So now I know that this line is exactly parallel to that line. Or another way I could do it is just take this and if I have this set at seven millimeters I can go ahead and just scribe a line like this. And I know that since this edge is flat because I used my square, this edge is flat, I can do the same thing on both of them. So I could either use the square or I can use my calipers. And then I just go in with my saw. And I don't want to cut on the line, I just want to cut right on the outside of the line. And what I'll do is is make sure that I file right up to that line. When I'm finished. Again, not on the line, just to the outside of the line. So I, as I'm sawing, I can actually still see just a sliver of that line if I'm doing it correctly. That way I won't have as much to file away. go and then I just take my file and just clean it up and bring it right up to that line and there we go we've got a square that is exactly 90 degrees and if we measure it it is right at 7 millimeters so now you've got a square piece, you can use it for rectangles, but, but this works great because you know that this is 90 degrees and as long as you use this to make that, then you know that this piece is 90 degrees as well. Alright, another trick I want to show you is in wax. Um, see, I've already got a flat edge here, so what I want to do is I'm going to scribe a line in the wax. I'm using my dividers and the the line that I'm making is right about two millimeters. So I'm going to scribe one line about two millimeters from the end. Okay, and now I'm going to take my dividers and here I'm just going to put a dimple, put another, take one edge and put it in the dimple I made and make another dimple and and another dimple on this side. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to make a dimple, put this edge in there to make another dimple, and one more dimple. Okay, so, so now I'm going to take my, my jeweler square and I'm going to line up the two dimples that I made, put my scribe in one hole, and 
line it up to the other and I'm going to scribe a line and then I'm going to do the same thing with the next dimple that I made and I'm going to scribe a line <clears throat> okay so now I have three lines here now I want to make this line a little bit deeper and wider so so I've actually altered an old burr and since these are, are these lines are pretty deep I can just go in and scrape along that line so again I'm just making these a little bit deeper So now I've got three lines. Now I'm going to go in the other way and do the same thing. I'm going to make a dimple. Actually, I'm going to scratch a line, and I know that this is two millimeters because that's what I have my divider set at. And then I can go in and make a dimple, make another dimple. Make another dimple and I can continue doing this as much as I want and I can do this on the whole piece I want and and I'm just showing this so that to give you an idea and now I'll take my my jeweler square line it up on the dimples scribe that line line it up on the next dimple scribe that line line it up on the next dimple and again I can I can continue doing this on the whole piece if I wanted to. You can do it on pendants or sides of rings. And again, I'm going to take this tool that I have that I've made just to make these a little bit wider. And I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so I've, I've made these, what I've got actually is just like little squares. I'm just going to kind of clean these up a little bit, make them a little more pronounced. clean it up with a toothbrush. So you can see it's got these little checkerboards, kind of squares, which are neat if you want a, a design that's got uh, that kind of design. But I'm also going to show you another neat trick. I'm going to take my torch, or you can use just a lighter or any heat source, and very carefully, very carefully I'm going to pass along this. I don't want to melt it. I just want to just lightly alter it. So now instead of a checkerboard I've got little rounded beads and depending on the size of the checkerboard you have will be the size of the beads. You just want to be very careful. You don't want to melt them but you just want to alter them just a little bit and you can see that instead of a checkerboard now we've got little beads and you can do this over the whole area that you're carving you just got to be very careful with the flame you don't want to melt it too much but just enough to round off everything so that's just a couple of examples to show you of how I use my jeweler square I made one myself about 20 years ago and I haven't seen any around so I decided to make a few of them. They're available for a short time if you want one. There's a link available.